A war is coming. Not a war of men, nor of gods. One that shall be fought against an ancient forgotten foe. They are older than any god or myth, and will claim the right for the throne. Though, as the world crumbles by their schemes, a league stands opposed to them in hopes of quenching the fires of war and reigniting the flames of change. Still, the question remains, as the clock reaches to its final hour, will this league claim victory, or fall by my own hand? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. And yes, we have a drink. Thank you, Yotra, for subscribing. Congratulations on your 17 months. Thank you. Bottles up. But okay. Last we left off. The party, after finding out that the 17. I did not say three. 17 months. Yeah. It's 17. But yes, so last we left off. The party had been traveling across no man's land in hopes of stopping the possibility of war. Oh, he subscribed for three months. Oh. <laughs> oh, it says 17. No, so he's been subscribed. Gold. I think he... <laughs> Take the gold. <laughs> yes. Wow. I've been a follower for almost two years. Oh, wow. But oh. Yes. Let me check on mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that part, Yosh. Nope. I mean, dude, you've been following us since DOA. You popped in the first DOA stream we did on Twitch. Like, I remember that one. It was my birthday, and I'm freaking out going, I know that dude! I know that chatter! Damn, it's been three years. <laughs> three years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm my old. <laughs> okay. But yes. <laughs> Last we left off, you'd travel, you've been planning to travel to the Spear Alliance in hopes of stopping and coming war. Though, during this point, you had to travel through No Man's Land, a magical <laughs> wasteland that is a curse on the land itself, encountering horrific entities and being able to narrowly avoid most of them. However, you did lose one person. During a moment of madness, Ansem Calderos, the acting captain, had almost killed Tal, the suicidal goblin, <laughs> and ended up successfully killing Nar as Nar was attempting to lead him into the brig. Hey, you'd found out more after Nar's passing, though. Due to the land's rifts, and the weakness, the weakening of the weave in this area. Nar's grief in his life had led to him being sucked into the Shadowfell, where he lived a life of a limbo for you're not sure how long. Even though it had been a few hours in different realms, time fluctuates rapidly. Luckily, 
from the strange occurrence of you being brought into the Shadowfell along with Arbuckle. You're able to free him and allow him to fully pass on. As you find yourself back on the ship, you notice that a fog has been the same fog that first brought you away from the ship into that strange realm. Is starting to dissipate around you. Each one of the crew that have been acting during this time, those switching out for the shifts, you notice something strange. As the fog <laughs> clears, the landscape has started to change. The less of the desolate wasteland, and you see as a almost a gradient of life emerging. You've made it to Spira. Thanks to a deal from a friend that you weren't sure of. Gobella. Mm-hmm. As you wake up for your shift, it is a strange sight. As you he- you're you woken up, not by an alarm, not by another crewmate, but by the words of, Shiny! And then tapping of, like, something on hard glass and it repeats it every little bit (laughs) opening your eyes you see on the little end table for the cot you have okay is a crow tapping on a small little gem it looks towards you taps on it and says shiny noticing your wake it just sort of quiets down just I would look over at it and go, hello, new friend. And hello. take the gem and then kind of look at it. Like, what's this for me? Shiny. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I put it in, in her pocket. I was like, Ugh. okay. Um, I don't get anything for you in in return. I'm sorry. Just sort of looks at you, cocks his head again to the side. (laughs) Um, I think Gilbella would, so she gets up and goes to the kitchen and try and find like seeds or something to give to the to the the bird. That's no problem at all. As you guys as you get up to the deck, ready to take your shift, knowing that you had days left, you see that you've gotten out of no man's land. Yeah. The day is yours. What would you like guys like to do? So I want to go ahead and just uh, say Bay is contemplating on the deck, just watching the horizon and also just finally made it with a changed perspective on life. Lieli is dealing with the goblin. <laughs> Poor Lieli. Stop playing the Minotaur. <laughs> you will not get to play with the Minotaur. You get to play when I say you get to play. <laughs> I just imagine you're still tied up. Like... <laughs> Lily. The mist after the fog sort of dissipates during the time that it was wrapped around the ship you're connected with the shadow film as part of your ability like part of your magic is connected with that realm between life and death however this is not the feeling of that you've had when experiencing rifts between the shadow fell something more friendly like a warm hug.
it sort of fades away, you feel the sensation sort of drops, but Yeah, well, he has like a sense of acknowledgement. All right, I'm gonna get you down. And don't do anything stupid. Takes a service plate, cuts it loose. All right. He falls down. Hey, now get back to scrubbing. Yep. Yeah. So anything you want to deal with, anything you would like to deal with in this early morning. It isn't gonna go uh since we're going on like final days who's in the hell uh currently your shift has been over you as you emerge back from the from the mist that had uh, brought you to that realm you find yourself back at the hell and it's not that the travels oh it's not that the, you're at the end of the days you've made it out of no man's land you're not sure how and from Navi's report, you flew the ship into some fog. Didn't say anything. And then by the time that the fog had dissipated, you were here. You traveled about... You made... You traveled ten days in less than six hours. It's a weird feeling at first and just goes to uh Navi. How long was I been gone? You haven't. You've been at the helm. You see as she puts up the major image again and you just see as you've been the same image of you being at the helm. is there. Are you That's... okay? I, I'm fine. Don't need to worry about we it. We can have C look at you if you need. Oh, that's, that's fine. Don't need to worry. I'm just... I'm just tired, so. <laughs> I'm sorry, the chat right now. It's a magical fog, Charlie. A magical fog of hopes and wonder. <laughs> it leads to Candy Rancher. We gotta go to Candy Man, <laughs> Charlie. Drink. Oh my goodness. We go for the magical Leo Pluridine. Oh, the magical Leo Pluridine. That's three. <laughs> That's three. <laughs> All right. Hey, don't blame me for watching too much of that in my youth. Okay. But yeah. You just see the same depiction, where you walked in, seeing, thinking you saw something fly into the ship. You move, um, you see the same stumble you made when the, when looking for that raven. And just instead of where you walked out and found yourself in a strange place, you walked back up to the helm, took the position. 
The raven flew up probably five minutes later. That's strange. You see as Navi looks towards the raven. Like, the the holographic raven. Uh, we should get going. Um, how much till we go to Guamani? Um, I'll get working on that right now. See, All right. Navi dissipates, goes back into the navigation room. Still working on actual maps. As the mage's network does not expand out to this area. Yeah, basically you have a <laughs> GPS system literally opening up map, like an maps. actual paper map and being like... <laughs> They pull out the sex and going like, hmm. I think we're going to need some maps when we land. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the maps you are using are from about a thousand years ago. Yep, I think we're going to have to update. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where's that update <laughs> notification when you need it? <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. So. Traveling onward. You can see as... From the distance... From what you can see below you, it looks like a massive forest down below. Fey and Gabella, you both get a small sense of rifts between the Fey emerging. Not close to you, but more Please. down below. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Lieli went outside and starts to feel the air. It becomes a lot lighter. And No Man's Land, it seems thicker. Almost like walking through a sandstorm. Mm -hmm. The air's fresh. It's a welcoming difference. Um, Gabella joins everybody up on the deck, but she's got the raven on her shoulder. All right. <laughs> Just... And walks up to everybody and goes, um, I got a new friend. Hello. Oh. Ah. Uh. Uh, I'm sure that that raven doesn't have any rabies. I, I don't think so. Well, he's quite nice and he talks. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> he talks. Lily gets close to the raven and is like, How you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he also gave me this. Mm -hmm. Goes into her pocket and pulls out the gem. The glimmer stone. The glimmer stone, the, the shiny glimmer rock. Stone. Okay, he has a cutie this. I gave I gave Gobella probably the most shenanigans filled magic item for her. <laughs> I'm excited. It should be in your Lily is identifying. Now. I think so. Lee is surely going to identify. He's curious. Do you let oh. him identify, Cabela? Identify? Basically, you find out what the item does. Yes. All right. So, Lee sitting down, casting identify on this object. Uh, hey, hi. Yeah. You're supposed to be level 11, not 20. What? Wait, what? 
I don't know if it's a glitch Wait, on DDPI. Wait, what? 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 <laughs> Level 20! <laughs> what the heck? This is I, a powerful frog! <laughs> <laughs> no. It is a joke, the whole bunch of levels. Okay. I did! Oh, no, we did that! Oh, okay, yeah, no, it's fixed. It was like, on the screen, it showed level 20. <laughs> fixed it. Holy Christmas miracles, Batman! <laughs> All right. Oh, I didn't edit in. Is you I know I have to put the holy something something Batman. Yeah, fair. I'll drink for that one. You okay? The glimmer stone. Um, it does not require attunement. It appears uh -huh. as a small, smooth, polished gemstone for this one here it it looks like more of something guardian would have had it's not more like a quartz a pretty quartz than an actual gemstone or a valuable gemstone it's held together by a twine tied around it and it can be worn as a necklace or adjusted if you want to wear as a bracelet or whatever else you would like okay um while while having this item on you, the wielder can cast the light cantrip at will without needing components. And once per day, as an action, they can give a magical blessing to a willing creature. Oh, For the next that's hour, cool. that creature gains a plus two to an ability modifier of the wielder's choice. Either strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. However, during this time they faintly glow a color corresponding to the chosen ability score. For example, oh, strength could make the wearer grow reddish, a reddish hue, while charisma might make them glow uh, purple. Oh. And that attribute can only be used once per day, and when, when expended, it does not recharge until the next dawn. I like that. This is quite an interesting rock. Passes it on to Gibella. And like gives exposition of what it does. Back in her pocket is that yeah, it's a neat little thing. All right. So. Let you guys travel on farther. I need Leo choose odds or evens. Uh, events. All right. I need you to roll a d100 for Faye. And go, I, Heidi, I need you to roll a d100 for Gilbella, please. Okay. Pick out my dice. Uh, I got a 92. A 92. 92. Don't mind the hiccups. I've got an 84. 84? Mm -hmm. I work close to the high numbers. Yeah, you're right? Also, okay, cool. That's going to be fun when that triggers. You're something. rolling high. <laughs> rolling? <laughs> I'm Monkey DM Switch oh every Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Actually, Gabella, you know the land you guys are currently above. Uh -huh. The great forest of. <laughs> it's a 
primarily goblin, but it does have connections a lot with the Fae. And one of the spots okay. that you first emerge when entering, when going through the, uh, when coming to the prime material plane. Okay. As you come, as with the Witchlight Carnival primarily subsides in the Feywild. Yeah. It's about center of Spear Alliance, as you, as your knowledge would, as just the surface knowledge you know would pop in from. Mm -hmm. but yes. You get a. Navi takes a bit, but she's able to find the coordinates. Traveling south and try finding any spot that could either passage a ship. It's either one travel south and try finding a spot that could hold the ship there for it to get repairs and whatever else, or follow the coastline south. Yeah. They're unsure if airships are even around this area, but your ship can land in the water. So, Captain Faye, what is your choice? Yeah, it's a land on water? No, it's either one you can... Uh, the ship can hover. But the other thing is trying... It's either one going for that, or two trying to follow the coastline for Guamani. Or go... Uh, sorry, yeah. Guamani. Yeah, it does suffer damage last time we did uh, try to go and hover. I would say let's go to the coastline, the safe route. And hopefully we can find a landing spot. All right. This baby needs repairs. So. As you have your course, charting forward. It takes about a day or so. And you get the alert of, well, Faye, you're awoken by this. Um, Captain Faye, the ship is being hailed. It's urgent. Hey, wait, what's going on? Good to go, on the ship. Uh, navigation deck. Yep. What's going on? Um, I just received a message from there. As you see as Navi, the illusion pops, you see as like a communication pops up. Just the audio log. Attention, Anthlanthurian ship. Prepare yourself to be searched. Or we will be unleashing the goblins. You can hear in the background. Booyak! Booyak! Not yet. Is the Captain Rogers of the Spear Alliance United Force? I'm sorry, hold on a second. So the ship goes in a stand tall because she started gig she started like sort of giggling because of the word booyak. Do you know Goblin? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She finds the word booyak funny. <laughs> All right. Um, certainly we, we will hold to be said right away. She starts giggling. <laughs> like there's a, like like a small giggle in the background from Faye. I'm sorry. Um we'll we'll be on our way. Uh you can search us I'll, uh I'll hold in just a minute. Alright. <laughs> So 
so. Hey, Stealthy Rolls, how's it going? Welcome in. Um, glad to see you can make it to the D&D game. Uh, Wahoo! <laughs> so. You guys, actually stepping out, you can find there looks to be an old Atlantharian ship that has been commandeered. It's about twice the size of the poor choice. It has a name on it. Uh, the M Mage's Edge. <laughs> you see as the gangplank is put down between the two ships. And... An odd sight for those from Atlanta. You see actual officials, like military officials. One a half orc carrying a shield with. Hey, roll me a religion check. No problem. Religion check. <laughs> religion check. Natural 20. <laughs> okay. Bay. I mean, Duke Moriarty right. is a mind flare, and one of the main domains that mind flares inhabit now is the Underdark. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had the it's not a phase, dad, time. Uh huh. So you've learned of, through just mitosis of learning of how mind flares worked. Or lithids functioned, you'd found out about the drought. The symbol he carries on him is of a drought goddess known as Elstray. Follow with him is a warforge that looks like he has dried coral growing on the on bits of his armor, looking more like he's walked out of the ocean. As the armor has been, as bits of the metal have been rusted and such. And the strangest sight a hobgoblin. A loot to their side as they step on the ship. You see, as the half orc looks at you guys. This is... Sort of shocked, as you get the feeling that they've had to deal with a few Atlanth... Uh, you've gotten the... You know from the princess that there's been a few planned attacks by the spear bearers. Mm -hmm. And you get the sense that these guys have probably taken down a few ships. This is the first time they've seen a crew that was not primarily elves. Or primarily humans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do have one human. You have, you have one human, and Faye... Faye is the... I don't that, know. That looks like Elf. But yeah. <laughs> she go ahead... She she went ahead and was like... Change this to Changeling. Did you come... Were you captured, or...? No. What... Uh, Oh, let me introduce myself. I am Duchess Faye Moriarty of House Moriarty. I am part of the Council of the, uh, well, the Crown City. Uh, you probably know the princess. She's now queen. Oh, and this is my crew. And just goes like, go ahead, introduce yourself. Just no skill. Hi, I'm Gabella. Addy, um, Captain Steve Rogers. Nice to meet you. This is... Well, that's Wrecker. And that's Loot. Good day. You see the Hopgoblin sort of waves towards you. He goes Leally in the back is... I'm Leally. Wait a minute. 
Leela, you know this guy. Back in Iron Hall, Steve Rogers, the guy that helped the party when the. Uh... It's the re like realization on Leela is like, no way, no is that who I think it is? Oh, well, <laughs> Rogers, how are you doing? He goes for a hug. <laughs> he returns the hug to you. Wait, so these Ah, oh, it's been so long. I know, it's been a few months. How you been holding up? I heard that you were having some issues with the guild. You sort of fell off the place of the earth. Yeah. Long story, but we we got really we we reconciled. Right. Alright. And you see as like the other two guards look and go, wait, wait. He said Leeli? Yeah, he said Leeli. You can hear muttering as they're like Oh, he's the future shaman. They all they sort of bow down go, uh, uh Oh. Oh wait, wait, wait. what was this? <laughs> what is this? Uh Yeah, they were looking at um the records of a lot of shit's been going on around here. I see. Hey, well, they put me back in deployment after a couple of attacks were made on the cities. We got this Wait, ship what about mm, three weeks ago. Uh, yeah. What happened? We've there's been a few attacks on the borderline. Um, one that happened inside Winter. Small village got taken down by some strange-looking things. He had. It looked normal at first, but then they were healing like trolls, and they were... Some were shooting beams out of their chest. They, they looked more like something out of a horror book than anything else. That fake kind of interrupts. Um, were those, uh, like, constructs, are they, like, bulked up? They weren't Very gone. gay high. No, they were flesh and bone. Were they having, like, different limbs? Yeah, they look like they were, uh, so, like, patched up. Oh, gosh. They yeah, look like that's a, what I figured. They look like a flesh golem, but had more intelligence than one. Yeah, we met a few back at Atlanta. See his wrecker sort of pulls out on his pouch going, They carry these ambulance, they carry these marks on them. And you see the mark of the spear bearer. Well, as you guys know, thanks to the princess and Vok, this is a mark of the pure miles. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> the group that has been oh, sent over here fuck. to start battles. Think of this as their secret service. Their uh, not even secret service. This is just full on spec ops. Oh boy. That's going to be a problem for Faith because she knows that the Pyramids are doing attacks. Yeah. Well, we've had a few. We've had some periodically with this. And, um. <laughs> we've had a couple happen around here, but they've been ramping up <laughs> recently. Well, so they've been having us watch border more for any ships coming in. We also had a case of some people, you no, know, a large group of people being taken. Luckily, we found their ship. Crack, the sad part is they had a massive disease taken over. Oh, interesting. Well, just to let you know of our, well, trajectory and all that, we are here to go on our way to Guamani and do some diplomatic issue. From the Queen herself. I'm acting advisor, and here I am. <laughs> when no man's land. Old tippy top and I. Well, hey. Probably you can see from the uh, 
friends of the ship. Yeah, we had a busy trip. Um, I mean, I can... Yeah. Well, uh, you said you're heading to cut, uh, do a money. Mm-hmm. All right. You know what part you're heading to? Uh, from the looks of it, um, sort of unfamiliar territory for me. Um, but I believe that boy is quite familiar. Well, of course it's familiar. We're in the we're in the greatest land of Europe. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Do you have a bit of an indigestion? No, 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 no. It's it's how it's pronounced. It's. Uh, yeah, um, actually, it's. You you mean more phlegm oh, on it? So, you say it down there. Yeah. Or, yes. Oh, it's it's right. Oh, no. uh, it's uh, it's goblin. It, uh, So goblins speak in You know let's just skip I mean before to, I, start I mean to, ma'am to most I'm people I'm just as confused as you are. To most people they think goblin is a language of love. Is gonna keep her silence she is she gonna keep her silence? <laughs> Absolutely not. Let me show. Madam, it is a language of love. <laughs> a language of love. <laughs> I find that really like it. It's in on very. It's interesting weird territory. It's. Interesting, but it's how can I put this into words? It is weird that goblins are talking in in throat inflammation and goggles and burps. No, no, no! <laughs> you don't, you don't understand the the language that these goblins reproduces. It's like. Think of it as a just think it from the bottom of your gut. You could just expel out all of your emotions. It's like it's like you, know, you say you gust out all of the emotions out. You burst it out of your scenes. Oh that doesn't make it any better. Yeah, I'm just gonna go and skip all that. But like, like I said, we are here for um, diplomatic uh, thingamajig. I, I just, it's been a rough few months, few days, whatever. Wait. No man's land is weird. I just want to try to finish this as soon as possible. And now that you said about the news of Sidewinter being in trouble with the mangled maniacs of malice. It's, it's going to go out in so many. You are going to suffer for that hiding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did it to me. I did that to you. It's okay. I didn't do it. I did not do it. Oh. Oh, well. That was Yosh. That was Yosh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. I thought Leah did to me. Shot through the heart. But anyway, there's. If you're in the Guaman, there's two parts of it. It's hard to split between the capitals themselves. Uh, there's a toe. Mm -hmm. And there's Kaguax. Basically, you gotta get in green. If you're looking to try talking to them about the stuff, uh, you're gonna be speaking with both of them. But that's amazing. Uh, a toe which might be would you your recommend best bet. to me? A toe might be your best bet at the start. 
They seem to be a bit more your speed. They're the uh, artisan capital of Gumani. Diplomats working on the people, while Kagu acts as more of the military head of the state. They both work with Caesar, but ain't no one's been able to talk to him for, oh, past month or so? Hmm. After the attacks on the city? No claimed attacks? Oh, and I'll just go from on my on our way to a tow. Oh, you're heading that way. You need a place to stay or anything like that. The battered banner is going to be pretty good. They hold up people like us. Sort of see as he takes holds up the badge, the guild badge. It's just approach. Yeah. Wish you luck. Uh, you see as Luke comes back up going, uh, nothing out of the ordinary here. They don't even have that many weapons. That's your right. Didn't out of onto many weapons. Hey, sorry, it's they've been on edge. We've had a couple, couple run-ins with uh, ships, uh, galleons about gestures towards the mage's edge. And uh, yeah, well, I'm sure you are all going to be busy afterwards. If there's anything that you will need, um, any help from us, let us know. We'll be happy to do it. All right. Or just uh, nods towards you going, have a pleasant trip. Same for you. Oh, one more thing. See as he pulls out a document goes to record uses back to sign it they get pulled over and in case any more interactions happen he hands you a basically a parchment that says that you have the permission from one of the silver and um, one of the silver maidens of gold glare oh oh thank you for that Right. Yeah, have a hey, nice day. Steve. Nice yeah. meeting you, man. I seen you again. Glad you're doing a lot better than last I saw you. Got some more meat on your bones. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Alright. Gets on to, they walk past the gangplank. Bring the ship back up and Is there anything else you need to ask them of? Uh, for Stanley Ellie, we're good. Yo, Bella? No, I'm good. All right. So. All right, so on our way to a tow. All right. <laughs> No basis. <laughs> this is the sea. So we are meeting you. The Thanks. sun's beating down. Yes, I'm on my way. There's no place that I'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> that is a trick. <laughs> Give me a. Cabela, give yeah. me a survival check, please. Why? Oh, gosh. <laughs> You're the one taking over Helm at this moment here. <laughs> Add a d4. Add a d4 to that? Yep. What'd you get? Four. 
<laughs> Did you roll two twos or what did you roll? <laughs> Survival no, check I... was a three, and the and, and the, the D four was, was a one. A one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I should have given you like an advantage or something. As I should have given an advantage for both of us. It is a bit str- okay. We're all gonna die. No, it's more about no. seeing how- no. This is no. about seeing how die. far you get along. Okay. Luckily, not I'm not okay going to punish you for rolling- basically rolling low on that. <laughs> That's the whole fun of it. Punish me. During this time, you're sort of able to keep with the coastline, uh, more of just going straight as it winds. Yeah. Give me a wisdom save. Mm -hmm. Wisdom, help me out, please. 17. Oh, 17. Okay. That's good. There That's we go. Good. You pass. However, you. your mind is still filled with that same faceless voice. You see, you can hear the distress that Avok and Arbuckle are going through. You're trying to fight it off. You're able to keep it off while doing this. Mm. Bring me. The, uh, bring me the amulet to the shades of mist. In return, he will live, as it's just sort of constant whispering in your ear for a while. Just Gabella takes one hand off of the wheel and is just like, "Shut up! Stop it!" And tries to shake something, gets back to it. All right. Hey. Gabella's just been following the coastline so far. Um, you've gotten to one oddity, though, as she was following it. For about the first four hours of your shift, it was daytime, but it was as dark as night out. Until almost like running into a wall of a storm, the light broke through, and you can tell it's mid afternoon. Mm -hmm. Seems to be some strange oddities around that area. So you've flown out of Golgolirt's territory. Alright. It's Hestia's turn next. Well, fuck! You rolled a nat 20. Ooh. Oh. Uh, Halesia. Or what? Her, um, survival check. <laughs> so, as you see Gabriel Halesia come up to you, goes, um, I could take, uh, time for me to take over. Great. Right. Thank you so much, and then she kind of like backs away and lets her take over. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, fine. I think I'm just a little tired. Um, I'm just gonna go lay down for a little bit. Okay. I, I know you. we've had a stressful few days. If you need to talk, I'd be more than happy to listen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um. I'll get back to you on that. Kaz walks away. Alright. So. You go to lay down. Uh, well, as you walk away, you guys want to cover anything or do you want to just cut to the next scene? I'm just laying, I'm laying down, so. All right. Up to Wheels. Hey. Okay. What? Lily. 
Bailey is gonna uh, go ahead and play cards with the crew. Bay is just uh, in the navigation room trying to help out. Uh, Navi and also trying not to stress out on anything. She hasn't gone away from home and this is first time just leaving the comforts of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Try to meet new people. <laughs> All right. So, you guys, get your rest. You can mark off another long rest in. Yes. And oh, resting. You see as when you wake up vast separated city-states but tightly condensed cities. Nothing like you've seen in Atlanta. However, the towers are massive made of a strange concrete. Um it's a blend it from the humans looking around, it's a blend of classical Greek infrastructure. Hmm. The cities are almost boxed off to a strange point looking from above. You can see as a dock section is placed for the ships itself. As each one of you are woken up, you hear Navi announce, Welcome to the city of Ato. As the ship is slowly descending towards the ocean, it'll take a little bit for the landing, but yes. Insert Roman music. In my head, it's just like a cinematic view, just from the town, seeing the ship passing by. <laughs> yeah, you can even seeing from below. Like you, even looking at the people from down below, you can see they're looking, even though you can't fully see their face, it's almost a feeling of them looking up with awe, some with fear, as this might be the first flying ship or one of the first flying ships they've ever seen. Oh, oh. magic has advanced, however, one thing of Atlanta throughout every nation on the world is they had advanced the farthest. After the Great War. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> this is gonna be difficult for me to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> On behest of the new crowd, this is gonna be. Uh, this is gonna. This is gonna take a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, as we prepare for the landing, uh, Bay goes to the crew, gathers them up, and just goes for like a preparation speech for when we land. So, how is everyone doing? Hope is everyone feeling well, well rested, well dressed, well fed. Is anyone well fed? Like, like yeah. you, you and your chubby little bone sky. Like a, it, a little harsh. Ouch. I've been fed good. <laughs> like Z's looking at you like what? <laughs> like chubby little bone sky. <laughs> no, don't worry, Z. I'm just playing around. Sorry if I. It's all right, dude. It. <laughs> just getting you. <laughs> like. Uh... So, um, as you all know, for the preparations of this, I want for this crew to have all the embarkment ready. For today is going to be a very significant, very interesting, important date. This is where we are going to do diplomatic community with the rest of Sphera Alliance under the guidance of the new queen and all. 
Right. So, I want you all to be on your best behavior as we are embarking to at least the capital and try to address it to the Caesar. I know that this is going to be a little difficult because of the new upcoming battles that they've been coming up the uh, absolute horrifying people, folks with grafted uh, appendages of different creatures. Yeah, it's going to be a little difficult, but nothing more than we can manage. Well, Ellie goes, are you sure you're going to be out there? You seem more ecstatic. More uncomfortable than usual. No, no, no. Everything is totally going to be fine. We're all going to be okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she sits there for like a few seconds, <laughs> motionless, smiling. All right. Uh, well, I hope everyone is prepared to land. Uh, crew dismissed. All right. As the ship land, you feel the ship shifts for flight to now floating in the ocean, starting to head towards the docks. You see a few of the dock hands emerge outward and start hooking in the ship, like leading them in that area. The gangplank is brought up, put on there, and you are met by. Well, first off, one of the interesting sights for here. Tieflings in Lanther have been relatively rare. There have been small groups of them before you may have encountered. However, the city's filled with them. Different colors, mm -hmm. horn designs, some with wings, some without. And you are greeted by Van, um, Dockmaster Van Ro. A gold tiefling. Greetings. Eh. Poor... Looks like a poor choice. Mm, yep, that's the name. The yeah. ship. Who is... Sort of shocked at the sight of, like, the humans. The human and elf looking people. Um... Are you from Golgalia? No, no. We're not from Golgalia. See, like, the face turn white for a second. Don't, don't worry. Uh, we do come in peace. Uh, uh, under the head of the new queen. Uh, roll persuasion? I got this. Persuasion. That is her highest set yet. 15 plus 9. Ooh. Yep, like I said, highest stat. Along with intimidation, which is weird. <laughs> um, so, Faye. At first, you see the distressful look on his face as he's unsure of what you guys you imagine only knowing of the attacks of Atlanta. Oh. Some, somehow he gets a sense that you can be trusted. Um, very well. I need you to fill out these forms. Oh, most certainly. Hands them to Science you. Hands of the forms. Uh, gives them back. Alright. As he take as taking him back right on the ship, um uh, says store the ship will be storing the ship will be a uh, twenty gold a day. 
the one that's massive. Uh, if you need repairs, which it looks like you need repairs. Oh yes, we did encounter the full trajectory all the way here. Um, that's what you get when you get to go across of it, and going around it would be very, very silly. Alright. Well, um, we can definitely try getting some of our, uh, some of our shipwrights to work on this. Oh, most certainly. Um, uh. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your name. And just points it out to Lieli. We were at the ship for almost two months. Probably even more. I don't know. Time lapses. Uh, and you haven't even mentioned my name. <laughs> what? <laughs> sure. Taps that just just goes away like. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, for the payment, of course. Uh, and passes on the twenty gold for the stay, and how much for the repairs? Uh, the repairs will be you to get contacted about this. Oh, for contact. All right. Yes. Stepping off, you can see your ship has gotten a lot of attention. People from around the docks and even from the city have moved towards the docks to look at this. The first flying... To many, the first flying ship they have seen. Did you guys step off? Seeing the vast city of a toe. Would you like to take a little bit of a break? Yes. Yep. All right. So, guys, please stick around. We'll be right back. Get Refill your drinks. Get your snacks. And, yeah. Welcome back, everyone. So. You guys have made it. To the city of Atom. You've made a scene by... Flying in on an airship. A rare sight around here. It is a rare sight to behold that we are handling a flying ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can see as many people flock the docks just to see this strange thing. You notice a couple guards come running towards that area. However, the 
they slowly back down as the dock workers start explaining this stuff. <laughs> Traveling through the city. <laughs> you... You notice the strange sights around here. Though the city might not be as... Techno techno technologically advanced as Atlanta, they have a larger focus on magic itself. Similar to Atlanta. However, these are more blended in with mundane objects. Rather than the more artificer style that Atlanta is known for. If you guys are in the city, where would you first like to go to? Uh... Bailey is gonna go ahead and, uh... Go and get a crew with him just to look around. And... Oh! And since Cynthia is around... He's gonna go to her, like... Uh, so this must be your own, right? Who's Cynthia? Hacynthia. Hacin oh, Hacynthia. I heard Cynthia. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my notes like... I'm in a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I came from Kaguax. But it's close too. Oh. Uh... Only a four days journey? But they are so, so far away. Hmm. Yeah, at least we can go ahead and explore the town. Uh, who's coming with me? I'll go. Uh, no. So, Bailey, uh, Bailey, Hestia, Gabella. And Z head out for this. Faye, are you coming along or what are you doing, Faye? Uh, Faye is gonna go ahead and try to go to the, uh, like, what would be this place? Like a, uh, like a white, where's the White House? <laughs> I need to see the House of Representatives. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me either investigation or persuasion. Where is the thing? I thought I have it, but never. So, I'll go for persuasion. 16. 16. It takes you some time, but you do find out that you do find out that uh, the council um, they would be found in the council of archons. It's sort of center city on the. The whole, the city itself is sort of built on a hill as the center part of it is the highest section. Council of Archons mm. can be found there. It's, it's actually right with the, the Great Archive. And as they have said, the... the uh, <clears throat> and surrounded by the Elemental Garden. But as you're figuring that out, let's go over to the other group. What are you guys doing? Mostly sightseeing and shopping. All right. <laughs> Maybe a little recon. Or a recon too. <laughs> but for Lieli, mostly sightseeing and shopping. Nice. 
So, I mean, he he didn't explore this new town. Might as well go ahead and mm -hmm. enjoy it while it lasts. Going through the city. You know, there is the Zalak Academy. Um, this is one of the major the major municipal buildings around here as this seems to be their premier magical institute around the area. Hmm. Many mages, many hopeful mages walking in and out of, the te of it each day. And surrounding there is known as the Arcane District. Almost connecting mage towers, alchemical la um, laboratories, and enchanted workshop where wizards and artificers experiment with spells, magical inventions, and alchemical concoctions to be sold. Hmm. You also see that a few of them, not being able to buy the real estate area of it, have sort of brought in carts or tents to make makeshift shops on this road. Um, after about an hour or so of exploring, you can see the Alchemist Guild, the Alchemist Guild building, which, as the name as the name explains, this is where most of the alchemists of the city do come together to discuss, observe, and keep the alchemical creations regulated within the city. Yeah. Um, there is the Magical Bazaar, located close to the docks. Um, it is a vibrant marketplace where enchanted potion sellers, item vendors display their magical wares from here and far. The visit and then, um, visitors can find, you see scrolls, magical trinkets, and rare ingredients from the, from every, for any magical endeavor. There's also a strange, the Zalakian Library, which holds the history of the Empire Zalak and the rise of, Gol of Guamani, along with knowledge on the heritage of the tiefling race as a whole. Hmm. Right. And finally, this crowning jewel of the city. The Luminous Plaza. Grand square illuminated by enchanted lanterns and magical displays. It serves as more of a gathering point for people. It really connect is the center point where every portion, the six roads that lead to the six gates of of a toe, all conjoin. Hmm. And the day it's not as vibrant as you would think, though you hear at night. It's supposed to be something magical. But where would you guys like to go? I'd say we're walking around the the shops, me and Lily. Alright. We're window shopping. Window shopping. <laughs> yes, window shopping. <laughs> Coming from Gilbella. <laughs> um well, in the bazaar, there are a few different notable shops. One of those being the Mystic Emporium. This seems to be more of an arcane scroll and spell components place. Um, many of their items are advertised as spell books, wands, even some crystals used for divination, and just sort of a catch all for anything you would need for material components or if you mm -hmm. need a spell on hand. Okay. Yeah. Another one is the Enchanter's Nook. 
This place seems to specialize in enhancing weapons and armor along with accessories. And they do have, um, they do allow for custom commissions. Uh, Potion Elysium, which is an alchemical stall. It has a different, wide array of different potions and elixirs, each one with different listings of being from different parts of Idriel, and even some that are claimed to come from not of this plane. Oh. The Artisan Arcane. This spot works in finely crafted magic items, intrinsically designed um, stall, uh, staves and amulets to enchant jewelry and clothing, it seems like. Mm -hmm. The Scribe's ha Haven, a store dedicated to the sale of spell scrolls for adventurers. The Elemental Attic. This spot seems to be more of a hoarder's shop. Uh, think of like a second-hand magic store. Oh, yeah. It's stocked, <laughs> it's stocked with different wands and magic items. Even some components. Oh. That's cool. Though the overall theme seems to be elementals. Yeah. And the person running the shop is one of the few tieflings you don't... Is one of the few people that aren't a tiefling that you see around here. As they are a crystal genasi with a strange purplish crystal body. Hmm. Oh. There is the Familiar's Corner, a catering to spellcasters who rely on familiars. It offers magical items to enchant and protect familiars as a... more of a focus on keeping them around more. Additionally, they do have um, forms to fill out for emotional support familiars. Or creating a familiar's contract. That's cool. The Ethereum Atrium, which is a, a boutique that specializes in rare exotic magic items, mm. such as planar trinkets and uh, teleportation tokens. Mm -hmm. Alchemy and Beyond, this one seems to be more of your mass chain magic shops, which is sort of a little bit of a welcoming sight to see in this area. Yeah. Offer, they offer a variety of elixirs, vials, and concoctions, and alchemical gadgets. Hmm. The Ruining Glyph, a show, more of a showcase store for magical runes, glyphs, and sigils that can be inscribed on various surfaces. These magical symbols can be used for protection, divination, enchantment. Oh. The Crystal Cauldron. This one seems to be more focused on gemstones and the unique properties that they carry with them as spellcasting materials and even some with innate magical properties. Hmm. Uh, the Wormling Wares, which is a shop specializing in dragon-related magic items and lore. Mm -hmm. They claim um, this one seems to be a bit more... more of a... Uh, knickknack shop as a lot of their items they claim to be old dragon scales and teeth that they have found along the way that it's ran by a very old tiefling mm -hmm. the timeless hourglass a, another magic shop related to um, time magic okay. the illusion uh, the illusion the illusionist mirage a shop that is focused on items and Items, materials, and such related to illusionary, the school of illusions. Mm -hmm. And the Elemental Forge. This is a shop that is known for... This is a, another forge on this area that is related, more focused around infusing weapons and armor with mm -hmm. that of elemental power. However, yeah. Gabella, roll mm -hmm. me a... Roll me a perception check, please. Mm. Add a d4. Nineteen plus four. Damn. Yeah, I'm rolling my dice rather than the than the website. <laughs> the illusionist, uh, the illusionist Bad. mirage. A few things you notice. One, 
the depiction on the outside looks similar to the person you saw inside of Umir's temple. Okay. The same ghostly figure you saw in whose armor was the same design to the armor you wear now. Mm. However, another strange thing is you see your family's crest. It's not exactly the crest, but it looks very similar to that. Yeah. Sort of hung up with the same banners of the same... Same person that looked like a jester. Hmm. I'm like at the window, kind of staring at it. Or Gimbal's kind of staring at it. All right. Hmm. Which kind of looks like down at her jacket, at her crest, and looks back at it. It's like that looks almost the same. And what does it look almost the same? Um, I point over to the crest that I'm looking at in the shop to Lieli. I was like, doesn't that look like what I'm, what's on my jacket? Looks at, uh, at the logo, looks at the jacket. And that looks like it. Kind of similar though. Right? Hmm. Should we go talk to him? See. Let me go ahead, you lead. Okay, yeah, Google allows him to go inside the shop. So, as you do, it is it's strange. Um, you see different wands based around illusionary spells, scrolls of illusions, and even <laughs> small illusions popping up to show of what each item can do. Yeah. The person behind the counter, very energetic tiefling, sort of purplish skin, in what looks like a cosplay of the armor you have on? <laughs> Welcome to the Illusionist Mirage! Um, thank you! A minute. <laughs> a fellow historian, I see, like, looks at you in the armor and gets this big smile on their face. Um, yes, I, uh, I dabble in the history and Literature and all those kinds of things. Your replica of Waldro's armor is amazing. Waldro's armor? Do Waldro. Waldro the Jester. One of the one of the eight sages. Like sort of looks at you strangely. Sorry, sorry. Um, I, I believe I've heard of him. <clears throat> Just we noticed that it's similar to my family crest, which is then she shows it to to the tiefling. Hi. We've got a visitor. He looks at uh, her, I... he looks at like your crest. Looks at the look at the market. <laughs> No. No, his family was laid long ago. I mean, it does. It does very much compare to the spear. The spear crest. There's a little bit of an add-on, like a little bit of a difference to it, though. Yeah. It only really holds half of the crest, half of the imagery on your crest. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. 
He's like, he does look very intently at this and then sort of hands you back the the item. Well, no, that's very peculiar. Yes, he was one of the eight sages during the, uh, after the Great Dragon War. He's a disciple of Zalak. Oh. Waldrail Spear, also known as Waldrail the Jester. And you see, is like, he brings... Mm. But if you'd like to know more, I would love to tell you. Please do. Yes. Follow me. As like he sort of leads you into where you see most of the tapestries hung up of Waldrill, and yeah. it goes into the back. It's sort of like a of like almost a museum of the reference of him, but all in illusions. <laughs> well, the land was ravaged by dragons long ago, and during the war, many people had lost their homes, their hopes, their dreams, as destruction reigned everywhere. Mm -hmm. And during the war, he would travel from land to land. He would travel from city to city, as villages. And you see a depiction of this human-looking man who dressed as a jester to entertain people who had gone through struggles. He <laughs> hoped to share a light and keep a smile on those faces that had seen so much trauma. Yeah. And over time, after the Great War, or after the after the Draconic War, he yeah. was lucky enough to meet Zalak the Wise. <laughs> Learning magic from him and helping him in the conquest, he had become he had formed the magic that we know of today as illusions. Okay. It was a, and you just see the life of this man who's like still travel from village and city along mm -hmm. the way to keep a smile on their faces you That's see cool. as the eight sages emerge of Arshun the eager Eza the glo um, the glory Peta the kind Celestia the oracle mm -hmm. Jakrax the odd Vicaria the curious and Valentine, the lovely. It also it depicts this life of him traveling about. And luckily, in the later life, he was able to settle down. Him and the Oracle were able to create a family, though tragedy had struck. Unknown to any of them, something was targeting the sages. And you see uh -oh. the oracle being killed. Though, and along with his family were eradicated years ago. But I still, but many of those that were touched by him or had obtained a smile even in his life, of turmoil and strife. We carry along his image. We carry along his hopes and dreams of keeping a smile on everyone's face. I like that. And it was Celestia for note Celestia Grey, also known as Celestia the Oracle. Hmm. And Waldrell Sphere, or also known as Waldrell the jester gaining his n for note for both of them Waldrell was the sage of illusion and okay. Celestia was the sage of divination oh. oh that's cool But yes. Amazing person. And one that my family has always looked towards after one of my ancestors were able to experience him during a time of turmoil. That's amazing. He sounds like a great, great man. Yes. But may I help you with anything? Would you like any items or? Um. Try to 
don't think it's bad. I think I'm just going to look around for a little bit. Very well. I'm just kind of like wanders around the, the shop. All right. Uh, like Lieli is outside waiting. So, could be having fun. Experiencing new things? Of course I'm having fun. Kind <laughs> <laughs> like walks out of the store. Yeah, I'm fun. How about you? I uh, was just winning in the... Waiting for you, actually. Uh, I was hoping you would think that... I, I, I was hoping that I think that you would buy something from the store. Well, maybe on my back. But I, the shopkeeper in there was very interesting. So... I kind of explain to Liali like what um, the chief leg was talking about. Interesting. Mm. So these stages. These are probably the most important people here, right? Uh, this one seems. Uh, they seem to be. Yeah. Um. Clarify, the sages lived centuries ago during the War of Dragons. And over time have passed, but these were seen as sort of, from the information you gathered, almost like the um, the branching off deities of Zalak, a.k.a. your god. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More as like historical legend than... Because mm -hmm. they were the first to actually introduce the ideas of these schools of magic. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, we could go ahead and buy for some materials. I, of course like to go ahead and eat something that isn't from the ship. <laughs> of course. I'm tired of Sid's greasy food. <laughs> it's the same food every single time. <laughs> Just differently placed. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I could go for different food as well. All right, then who's hungry? Oh, like, dude, I could take something to eat, man. There we go. We're all real hungry. Yep, let's go for it. <laughs> Still smoking a joint. <laughs> <laughs> As we go ahead and just oh boy you need oh you're having the munchies right? Yeah <laughs> like did you wanna have wanna hit? Uh sure go ahead. And <laughs> <laughs> takes a hit. <laughs> Oof <laughs> Oh wow. That is way too hard. Oh you are under the effects of calm emotion for the next hour. Mm. A more calm reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bayweed has the, the healing property of whenever it is intaken, it gives the same effects as calm emotions for one hour. Mm. I'll give the app. Few minutes for me to punch up on something big. Ow. <laughs> but then I will go. Let's go. Alright. There's plenty of food from this plane, other planes. 
What are you looking for in particular? I'm curious. So for Lieli. Oh, roll D100 for Lieli. Oh, oh yes. That's roll we'll D100 because of someone. I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> 97. Hmm. Got a 9 and a 7 this side. Got for a different 9. <laughs> for the next hour, you are surrounded by faint ethereal music. <laughs> so your your trip has just gotten way deep. <laughs> Wait, if it's Faye, uh, I would just imagine. No, this is just... not Faye. This is Lee Ellie. No, it's Lee Ellie. No, no, uh, Faye, like Faye music. Not Faye as a Faye Moriarty. It's just. Oh, okay. This is like, um, if this is like, uh, Faye Wild, uh, kind of a weed, the only thing I can think of is there is, uh,. The music goes, Betty's a cream, Betty's a cream. I love the boy that's Betty's a cream. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> There's Luch going to sing somewhere. Betty's a cream, Betty's a cream. I'm a little boy that's Betty's a cream. <laughs> oh my god. Just. <laughs> hey there, boy. I'm a little boy who likes fairies and berries and cream. <laughs> All right. And there's this loot hanging out. Okay. People walk by and they just hear berries and cream. A very ethereal voice saying that. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Starting to have a uh, taste for berries and cream. I want, I want for dessert, berries and. All right. Yeah, that was a weird dessert, but okay. Shop. Yeah. That's it. We're going. We're going on a restaurant and. Going for the catch of the day. All right. Uh. Yep. So the place you guys are able to find is known as the Elemental Grill House, specializing in dishes from the elemental planes, specifically fish that can be found in there. Which is weird, as you find out there are fish. They're rock, literal rock fish and fire fish from the plains of fire and the plains of rock. Or plains of earth. I would imagine it would just be a fire fish probably swimming on love. Yeah. Rock fish probably swims in sand. <laughs> So, rock, let's go for a hearty meal. Rockfish. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Sounds good. So, given this, it's bullet meat. The shark, the land shark meat. <laughs> Grilled up for the you. The side of chips. <laughs> What? Bullets are just land sharks. You cannot persuade me the other way. Yep, I, I'm not. I'm not. I will not criticize them back. Land nope. sharks. <laughs> All right. Fantastic visit. You can see they're ran by four brothers, each one there. Basically, tieflings, but with Genasi traits. Mm -hmm. 
ringing in the food for you guys as uh, each one's put up for you. Excellent meal. Now, if you don't mind, what if we cut over to Faye? If that's okay with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Faye. Found your location. You've obtained, um, you've obtained the area you need to head to. And as you are walking through the elemental gardens, this beautiful landscape of plants from not just this realm, but every realm being cared and tended for. A strange mixture of colors as things from the Feywild and things from the, um, things from the elemental plains are grown in this one area. The most to create one of the strangest sights you think you've ever seen. I would like you to roll me a d12. Well, uh, thank you, and I roll you, and you're a nine. Nine. <laughs> okay. You can see a lot better. You notice as, like, a th almost a few, like, eye stalks start to emerge from the top of your head. Uh, roll me in D4. Four. Four eye stalks emerge atop your head. They'll last for four days. And uh, <laughs> while you have these, you have advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. As you walk by one of the plants, smell it, you hear someone go, Wait! Wait! <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh... And you feel the ice. I... <laughs> yeah, it's like you just feel the ice sucks this there. Yeah. It's like I can see three D now. Well, you're seeing in six D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, we haven't put the signs up yet. The Holovarians are going through their reproduction cycle, and they are excreting spores out. I, we. Greg. Oh. Why didn't you um, shut off this path? And you see as like this human comes running by. Sorry, boss. <laughs> oh boy. Someone got someone was getting chomped on by the the Avarian uh, man eater. It, it, what? I think have you seen a Venus flytrap before? Yeah. In the Shadowfell, there's a version of that that's big enough to, uh, to consume a human. It's gained the name Man Eater because the smells of the plant and the illusionary ability it has lures people in there and slowly dissolves them inside of it. It sounds hor oh. it sounds horrible, but luckily the person dies quickly compared to the Novorian uh, pitcher plant. Which is a slow process, lasting days. <laughs> oh, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> you you get the sense this garden was not just meant to look beautiful, but in the case of attacking soldiers, it was a defense. <laughs> Yep, it's a defense, a dangerous one, so uh -huh. don't go close. <laughs> yeah. It's garden beautiful and well protected. Yeah, and you don't fuck with the garden. <laughs> uh, don't nope. fuck with the half, garden. These, half of these plants have immunity to fire, too. <laughs> Burn. Why isn't it working? They're growing now. All right. 
Um, apologies about that. It should fade in a few days. Uh, let it fade. The, uh... Awesome. Ow. You see, like... <laughs> and you sort of notice you can see all... You can see it 360 degrees around you. <laughs> An owl? No, more like a dragonfly. And now it needs to turn their head around. Dragonflies, you just see the whole thing. <laughs> I know, it's a trippy thought to think about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is noticing it's just a pitch of screech inside. She is dying inside. Not only embarrassment, but also that she could she has extra vintages on top of her head. Um <laughs> you do notice though this tiefling, one of his ears falls out of the hat that he's wearing. Looks like he had the same effect. At, he had a similar effect to you, but it's donkey ears. Yes, uh, I was the first one to find out today that it was their reproduction cycle. It only happens every three years. I'm like... <laughs> stuffs, the, <laughs> stuffs the donkey ear back in. Uh, hey. Good to know, and I'm be well aware to be presenting on this report mm -hmm. of the archives. <laughs> her, her nervousness is kicking in very hard. <laughs> All right. So, entering in, uh, walking past this, however you want to, either trying to hide them or walking with the eye stalks emerge. Oh, he, Bay is going to ask for a hat. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you, it's sort of like a beanie. Oh, look at beanie. <laughs> Roll, okay, roll, roll me a d6. Roll me a d6. <laughs> On a six, you describe the hat. It's a one. Okay. It is a flat cap. Like one of those golfing caps. <laughs> she takes it and puts it on her head. This will do. She doesn't like it at all. <laughs> and, uh, she's going, uh, just to ask, um, which way for the, uh, council members of Otto? Are you wishing to speak with the, the Archon Council? Yes. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Queen Blue River. Okay. Like, sort of, he looks curious at, like, okay, uh, like, not sure who Blue River is. And then just, um, follow this path directly down there. Try staying in the center. There's a few more of the, uh, Vargons around here. Just, uh, don't worry. They, most of them are fem um, most of them have already excreted their uh, pollen. Oh, Takes and, um, starts to... <laughs> uh, do you avoid the mushroom lanes? Uh, the spores are emerging this time. <laughs> Takes handkerchiefs to just put in the mouth. Thank you. Thank you.
All right. So, entering into entering to Archon Hall, you can see what looks like, what are depict uh, four statues depicting the the I'm sorry eight statues depicting the eight sages of Zalok. Roll me a roll me an insight check just for fun, shits and giggles. Yosh! Yes. What did he do? Another round magic surge. Here we go! Yay! Inside. That's a seven. Six plus nat one. <laughs> uh, Celestia, the oracle. Looks vaguely familiar. Like, you see, it sort of looks like someone you know. But you can't put your finger. It's that. It's like. He. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'll not touch on that later. You're. You don't, yeah, it's like. It's vaguely familiar, but Waldrell, the jester. You have the strange feeling that Gilbella and that person would get along perfectly. As he was known for pranks. Oh, you're the prankster. Oh, you and Bella would have a great time together. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just looks at flags. Just as uh, so and so and so looks at classic. You, you two will make a great duo. <laughs> I'd probably say the strangest one for you would be okay. uh, Fleeta the Kind. As their statue looks no older than like 12 years old. But apparently they were known for... They were the originator of necromancy. Or the school of necromancy to be more precise. Takes the flag and just looks. Can't eat it. Interesting. Moves on. <laughs> At this point, it's like, she's quite interesting. And then she she went and goes back to the statue of Celestia the Oracle. kind of moves forward. All right. Entering in the council room, you're greeted by a massive desk, secretaries working behind there, delivering papers and looks like orders for different things are allowed and un um, disallowed for the city as this is the major legislative uh, legislative part of it. Um, oh, as you approach um, yes, hello. Um, can I help you? Oh, yes. Hi, uh, my name is Duchess Faye Moriarty of the House Moriarty. I come here on behalf of our Queen Blue River of Atlanta. I don't see a House Moriarty registered on, uh, the CSU like quickly flips through the pages as this is a Warforge working behind there and just <laughs> I didn't see it. You said Atlanta. Atlanta, yes. Um very well. Look, I'm sorry, we are very busy. If you have if you're part of those uh the anti-war protesters, um, you, rem the council members are still very occupied. They've heard your claims. Uh, n n not the anti-wars. I'm here on behalf of the Queen, of requesting for a diplomacy treaty. 
Optimistic. Roll me pers- Roll me persuasion. Please. Coming in right hat. Coming in right hat. With advantage, you are a noble. Uh, this is persuasion, right? Yes. All right, persuasion. All right, let's go for advantage. Oh, that's better. 16 plus 9. Oh, oh. Well, um, unfortunately, the council members are fairly well occupied at the current moment. I could probably book you in for an appointment to meet one of them in two months. Um, can it just be a little bit sooner? It is, well, mostly an emergency. Well, I'm sorry, but we did have a few attacks happen, and currently we're trying to see where the... Uh, currently we're dealing with a resource management, as we're seeing where the items and shopkeepers will be sending their things. So, that's about as soon as I can get you in, darling. Um, however, unless you can get word from an actual one of the uh, uh, the council members then I don't know uh, that would be the thing outside of that it would be the only way to get in quicker Ooh, if, oh. like she's She's sitting there going like, oh, it's just, it's just, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm but so the thing is occupied. I can get you for next week. Like, yeah. She's doing that. She, she's doing it's like, it's like, oh. oh, um, Cassandra, please. Uh, looks over at one of the secretaries. Uh, please inform uh, High Artificer. Malichi Ironford, as sort of right, she's still right in front of you, and she's yell, sort of announcing this to one of the secretaries close by, uh, that his reservations have been approved by, um, at the Elemental Wine Cellar in, uh, for Friday. Okay. Why didn't you just send it? Because I want to make sure he gets it personally. You know, last time he didn't receive the message. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like she walks off. Hmm. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I have as that issue there. Oh. Wind Whisper has an appointment. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wind Whisper has an appointment tomorrow. Over in the. The Zarlock Institute. Oh, I have to make sure she gets informed about that. But yes, I'm, I'm truly sorry, miss. Uh, they have greatly, greatly... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, this she, is going to be an inside test on. <laughs> she's literally, yeah, basically she's giving this I'm sorry and trying to, and looking like busy and then mentioning this stuff. Would you like to roll an insight? <laughs> yeah, inside, absolutely. Uh, boy. Uh, inside, it's a 17 plus 6. <laughs> okay, 17 plus 6. You notice this Warforge has a small, like, she does have clothes on, like a secretarial uh, clothes on. Mm. Um, you notice underneath the jacket she has is a pin that has the IG, um, the IGP. IGP. And you see underneath it, like, sort of hidden. You're just barely able to notice this. Um, the Infernal Guardians of Peace. And 
you get the sense that she's trying to leave hints for you, but from what she can do right now, she's locked in for, two, like, two months. This is the next time she can pencil you in. <sighs> oh, yes, Flameheart also has his training. They have the training point. They have the arena for... For uh, Thursday, actually. And Moonshadow. Moonshadow does have, the, does have her conference. Over at the Zalak Institute. Like, basically, she's giving you locations of where they can be for you to try talking to one of them. Yeah. That's it. If Fake catches on on this, it's like... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Are you still here? Oh, I'm sorry. I... I'm sorry, I... Oh, no. Is there anything else way. I could help you with? Two months is fair. No, that'll be all. Two months will be fine. Yeah, very well. Very well. Uh, uh, have a nice day. And just go on to another way and... Oh, Tay! It's like, you hear one of the secret... You hear her yell out to one of the secretaries. <laughs> Cynthia, remember that Stormcaller <laughs> does have to do his inspections. Like, you could hear this from the end of it. Remember, remind Stormcaller you'll be right by his office and he needs to do his dock inspections tomorrow. Getting <laughs> 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 that. She, she, Faye is slow walking, hearing that, is right. like, and then picks up speed <laughs> and just giving the information as. She goes to uh, the guild pin and talks to everyone. So, um, we got good news and bad news. We might be having a little bit of a breakup, but good news. So, uh, some little mechanical birdie has given us a few hints of where we can find some of the members. Oh. Uh, if you can spot one on the nearest with you, it should be at the Monastery of, Man Monastery of Magic. Uh, that comes, to, that is supposed to be for tomorrow. She has a conference there for the students. Okay. Literally, she gave you a explanation for the next week of like their major, where their major appointments are. Um, Moonstone will be a count council member. Isolde Moonshadow will be at the Zalok Institute tomorrow for a... Basically, she's doing a presentation for the students. Flameheart mm -hmm. on Thursday will be having a... will be taking up the arena to present there. You're going to help me on these names and locations. Yeah, I will, I will make sure to put them in the notes too. Wavewalker, she for uh, basically said that make sure that she does not spend too much time at the beach, and that seems like every day. Gets her work done before leaving. Uh, Malichi Iron Forge is going to the Elemental uh, Wine Cellar on Friday. Seems like him and his wife. Or sorry, him and his partner. Um. Silver so, uh, Villa, sorry, a uh, Mistress Windshaper is a as next Wednesday is the coming Wednesday going to be uh, having a being take she's going to be taking up a point in the arena as an observer of a coming sporting event that they have. Stormcaller is supposed to be this weekend uh, examining the. Basically, he is supposed to, he's a part of the Dockmasters Association, uh, the Dockmasters Guild, so he's supposed to be doing his inspections there. <laughs> and Star, uh, Star Watcher is supposed to be teaching his lessons at the observatory that is located at the Zalok Institute. The only one that you did not get is um, Alurus and Solharen, who is the leader. Okay. But yes. That is what you have received, and I will send a 
really quick description of what they are for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So you guys have received the message. All right, I got it. Uh, no, you get, I'm saying everyone has received their badge message of what oh, comes next. Yeah. Like she's giving out all the information on um, where we can meet uh, most of the council members so we can start uh, gathering them for a meeting. Yeah, schedule a meeting. Basically, yeah. <laughs> to get a quicker meeting, you will need to have a conference with the... You'll need to have clearance from one of the council members themselves. All right. But yes. As you guys have... So... Lely, Gobella, you received your message from Faye of becoming... Of basically, we need to get to talk to these people. Any response? Uh, Lely responds with... <laughs> it's eating munching on food. He goes out of his on her back and goes, We're on it. Alright. Oh, from there. Do you guys like to call it in session? Yep, we're calling it here. So we get to beat the council members. Yeah, you guys gotta decide which one you're going after. But alright. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this long. Thank you for the Thank you for the re all the resubs and such. And thank you, DM. <laughs> Yes, we have to thank the DM. Thank you, players, Ever, for making this an amazing, amazing session. session. <laughs> so, is yeah, anyone wow. live? Uh, I can I'll be checking on it just a couple. I got no one. Wow, that's a first. Oh, I got no one too. <laughs> it's like um. empty. <laughs> Hold on, guys, I'm finding someone to raid unless you have suggestions. Yeah, me and it's suggestions. Any anyone who wants to go ahead and doing the uh yeah, oh, who shall we raid to? No one. Alright. And Yosh has the one. Um. <laughs> now let's. So we got nobody? Nobody to raid to? Hold up. Um, I have. I have one, actually. Oh! I'll type his name in the, in the chat. Send it my in the our way. Okay. Um, he's playing a bunch of retro games. All right, guys. It's all done for the beat. Kame Tsunami. Oh, uh, uh, Kame Tsunami. Uh, Kame Tsunami. Okay, Kame Tsunami. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably do that the next, like, next week. Yeah, sorry. My mind looks Alright, so we're gonna hit up uh, Kame Tsunami. 
Yeah. Guys, if you got the emotes, please use them. As always, make sure to keep calm and geek on. We will see you here next time. And if you want more crazy shenanigans, come by, check us out on Tuesday where we have our Phasmophobia stream. Or Ghost Exorcism, whatever we're feeling that day. Wednesday, where I'm doing my dual type challenge still. We have oh. Thursday, which is Heidi and I playing through Grounded once more. Well, me once more, Heidi for the first time. And Friday, where we have the Pokemon Trio Challenge, where Leo, Heidi, and myself are playing through Pokemon Heart Gold, trying to see who can beat it the fastest. So, guys. It'll be fun. Oh, yes. It's all fun. So, make sure to check those out. If you want to catch up with the stream, go check us out at youtube.com slash yowcastguild. You've been amazing. Thank you for letting us. Thank you for being here on your Saturday. And we'll see you here next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm sorry.